Welcome to Nature Book Review, a video showcasing books on nature and wildlife. There is hardly any person who doesn't know Charles Darwin. With his theories of natural selection, which he put forth in 1859, he shook the entire world, especially the scientific fraternity in the field of biology. Almost for five years, on board of HMS Beagle, he circumvented globe, a travel in which he saw variety of life forms and various geological formations. Somewhere in 1830, there arose a need to survey south and southeast coastline of South America. So, Captain Fitzroy was deputed to complete the task. To accompany him, to chart the territory, to record the observation, he wanted a geologist. So he asked Admiral Beaufort of Royal Admiralty. Admiral Beaufort asked his mathematician friend George Peacock to find some able person. Since Peacock was a mathematician, he did not know any person. So he contacted a well-known botanist at Cambridge, John Henslow. John Henslow himself initially decided to avail the offer but he declined the same stating that his wife is not happy for having him out for four years so then he contacted his brother-in-law Leonard Jennings who was a naturalist and a vicar at a parish Jennings also thought of having this opportunity grabbed but later on he also regretfully declined saying that my work at parish will be affected when I'll be out on board for four and a half years. So then Henslow thought of contacting Charles Darwin. Henslow then wrote a letter to Charles. Charles was initially excited to hear the offer. But his father had few objections. Like a little habit of Charles of seafaring then shortness of time to decide such a big phenomenon then compatibility of Charles with the uh, cabin crew or Captain Fitzroy and most importantly how Charles is going to settle in life after coming back from voyage of five and a half years so hearing to these objections of his father Charles wrote back to Henslow that I am personally interested but my father had some objections because of which I am denying the offer. After writing to Henslow, Charles went to his uncle's place. His uncle and cousin were actually elated to hear the offer. So they made up Charles' mind to open up discussion again with his father to accept the terms. So Charles wrote back to his father stating that I am really fit for such an offer and I would like to go. Along with Charles' letter, his uncle Josiah Wedgwood also wrote a letter stating that this is one of the rare opportunity for Charles and he is the best person for such expedition. Finally, Dr. Robert Darwin, father of Charles, gave up and he agreed of Charles going on the voyage. Delighted, Charles wrote back to Henslow and Peacock stating his acceptance. In September 1831, Charles came to London to meet Captain Fitzroy. Soon they became good friends. Then Captain Fitzroy took him to Plymouth to see the vessel in which they are going to sail. When all things were set, the ship sailed off on 10th of December but again it had to dock because of bad weather for next 11 days the weather was bad on 21st December ship again tried to sell but again because of weather condition the ship came back finally when green signals came from all the authorities weather department on 27th of December 1831 the ship sailed the epic voyage of HMS Beagle has begun on south 
साउथ ईस्ट एंड साउथ वेस्ट कोस्ट ऑफ साउथ अमेरिका द शिप स्पेंट गुड थ्री एंड हाफ ईयर डॉक्यूमेंटिंग जियोलॉजी चार्टिंग द टेरिटरी एंड कलेक्टिंग लॉट्स ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल स्पेसिमेंट्स इन सेप्टेम्बर एटीन थर्टी फाइव चार्ल्स लैंडेड ऑन फेमस गैलापैगोस आइलैंड He collected lot many specimens. He wrote in his diaries about creation of those specimens. Clearly, even after four years of voyage, Charles has not come out of a doctrine of spatial creation. Somewhere in October 1838, Charles started to develop an idea of natural selection. After hearing to this his friend Charles Lyell persuaded him to write a book on this topic Charles was also in contact with one of his contemporaries Alfred Russell Wallace who was working in Southeast Asia In June 1858 a blow came to Charles in the form of a letter written by Wallace Wallace in his letter proposed the same theories on which Charles was thinking and Wallace asked Charles advice After much discussion with Lyell and Hooker a Darwin Wallace paper was published presented in Linnean Society in July 1858 Finally Charles published his shortened version of On the Origin of the Species in November 1859 Interestingly the birds we call Darwin finches did not occupy a central position in thought of Darwin on natural selection It was almost after century in 1947 David Lack christened them as Darwin finches Somewhere in 1994 Peter Grant studied morphology and ecology of these birds to assert Darwin's assumptions. It is interesting to note that Darwin made lot of blunders while collecting specimens. Sometimes the date was wrong, sometimes the place was wrong, so he had to consult his shipmates for rectifying his mistakes. Since Charles was appointed as an geologist, He also wrote notes on geology which are almost four times than that of the natural history note. There are many such interesting facts which are given in this book. Fossil finches and fusions. Charles Darwin adventures and discoveries on the Beagle 1832 to 1836. On the top front page you will see a drawing of a uh, young Charles. So uh, the book appears little bit uh, thick of course it is thick but it's not uh, that heavy it is a hard bound copy so when you go through the book you will find that there are lot many maps then uh, portraits of some of the uh, contemporaries then drawings of ship um, then one of their shipmate was a uh, artist so he made uh, a good painting of the ports and the areas where the ship has docked even captain fitzroy was a bit of artist so he draw um, uh, drawings of the local fusion people then there are of course photographs of the specimens collected by uh, the voyage and of course there are uh, photographs taken uh, later which are introduced and in between you will find that there are quotes uh, letters written and even thoughts by charles by fitzroy and they are given in their original wording even there are letters written by peacock to henslow henslow to charles charles writing back to them again so you can think you can actually read what these people were thinking about the voyage and during the voyage on on the top of each page you will find that there is a month and year written so that gives an idea of how the voyage was progressing uh the language is really lucid uh, quite readable there is no difficulty in understanding uh, and the book has really come out nice no wonder that it is written by richard kenes a great grandson of charles darwin